Hi both, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming, an absolute pleasure to speak to you. How are you doing today? Good, Hi, Sarah, how are you? How are you? I think we're in completely different time zones. It's just before 8 a.m. here, but I think it's evening there, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it uh, just, just about midnight. <laughs> yeah. Is it a more reasonable time to be talking about a film like this? <laughs> First thing yeah, I know, it's great. <laughs> It's great. We're going to talk about scary movies and then I'm going to be freaked out in the dark. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> I actually, I have, I shouldn't watch these films on my own and I always do that. And then I get really freaked yeah. out. I need to watch them with somebody. Um, so maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to Slapface. You know, for people who don't know anything about this film, what can they expect? Because it's kind of a slow burn horror and, you know, it's, it's sort of unique. It's quite an original story. It's not something people might have seen before. Yeah, so uh, I'll go. So Slapface is a story about um, Lucas, played by August Maturo, and uh, he lives with his brother Tom, uh, my character, and they live in a rundown house near the woods. And um, and Lucas, um, after being bullied uh, by you know some some this this girl that is like his fake girlfriend and these other girls, um, he sort of secludes himself to the woods and um, befriends this witch creature that lives in the woods. And they form this bizarre bond and things go really well for a, a little bit. And then they start to go not so well. And, uh, and Lucas, <laughs> Lucas is there to try to stop the evil from happening. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, Jeremiah had this as a short film before this mm -hmm. one. So had you both seen that? And what was it that made you both want to be involved? And I know um, you're also involved as a producer, um, but for both of you also as, as actors, what was it, the appeal uh, of the script? And, and was it the short film that really sort of made you realize this was gonna make a great feature as well? Uh, should I go or are you? Yeah, Fine. go for it. Go for it, buddy. Okay, so uh, right before Slap Base, I was actually in The Nun, I was, um, in a quick scene, I was uh, a possessed boy named Daniel. <laughs> and uh, before that, I did not do any horror or thriller of any kind. So when I got that, um, I just fell in love with the horror and thriller genres. And that's what really drew me to this role. I was so excited to like uh, start a new movie and uh, with, with the same genre and uh, have a bigger part. And I was just really excited. Mm -hmm. After you, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I um I did see the short, and I was l actively reaching out to friends looking for a story like this. When I first got the script, it was a story. It was a father and a son story. Mm -hmm. And I went to Jeremiah, and I said, Jeremiah, no pressure. I want this to be your decision. But how cool would it be if it's a story about two brothers? Because it just adds such an element of tragedy that you know this brother is really trying to do the best he can and failing miserably but genuinely trying to be there for his little brother um and I, it just added like this whole other element to it and i really liked jeremiah's work you know his previous films so um and then it was interesting we he, he said yes you know we changed the script and then um we all we had a casting director there was jeremiah and there was myself and we all made lists of actors that we wanted to approach for the role of Lucas and August Maturo was on all three of our lists uh -huh. and uh, so he was one of the first reach outs we we made and as soon as he you know I loved him in The Nun he he and I both started on in Disney so I knew that his work ethic was was pretty solid um, and then when he said yes we were just super excited about it. Mm. You're quite far away from Disney right now, aren't you, with this film? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. A bit of a change in tone. Um, and, you know, what's interesting, I guess, kind of like, you know, the best horror films, you know, it's not just about sort of jump scares and, you know, there's a real kind of emotional undercurrent to it. And in particular, you know, the trauma that, you know, we discover you, the brothers have suffered and also in their relationship like you say kind of the older brother trying to take on that fatherly role and not always um hitting the mark so how did you see both of your characters and um why do you think it was um, important to also bring out kind of that you know sort of emotional side of things and the drama side of things Go for it, i kind of saw my character as a a tormented bullied boy who was just desperate for love you know and um, 
I felt like that was really important to the story to add that element because it would make things just all the more complex in with emotions and feelings. And uh, so that's why I made that choice. And I think it worked really well. Yeah, I just, I, I just, I love films that use the genre to sort of transcend the genre in their messaging and tell a story that's not really, you know, it's, it's beyond what, what the story that's being told. I mean, Spielberg did it with E.T. It wasn't a story about a, a boy and an alien. It was really a story about divorce and the family structure. Guillermo del Toro did it with Pan's Labyrinth, talking about war and used this fantastical world. And so that's what I saw when I read this script. I said, this wasn't a script about, yes, it is a story about a boy and his monster, but it's about grief and loss and bullying and, and, and just not having any other outlet to turn to and sort of how that grief and loss manifests itself in the mind of a little boy. Um, and then bam, then you have this terrifying witch. Uh, but, but yeah, to me, the story is very much about loss and grief and, and, and the cycle of trauma that we all go through. Um, somebody recently compared it to like, like the, the, the movie Inside Out, where you see all like the creatures in, mm. in somebody's head. And it's almost like, it's almost like how does anger and sadness and all that stuff manifest itself? Um, and then in this, in this medium, Jeremiah chose, you know, like a grim fairy tale, like a Frankenstein kind of story. Um, that almost ends like a Greek tragedy. So uh, it just, it took so many elements of like different stories that I loved and, and, and made this one. And, um, and it, it's, and I'm really, really happy that people that are watching the film, they get that. It's not, it's not lost on them, um, you know, when they watch the film and they're, they're, they're understanding the deeper meaning that we tried to, the deeper story we tried to tell in making it. Mm. And kind of, you know, I think even the tagline of the film is like, where do monsters come from? And it's kind of, how do these things kind of manifest themselves? And uh, in the film, you know, particularly with the, where the older brother is like almost like not able to um, perhaps deal with his grief. And, you know, perhaps there's something in there about toxic masculinity, kind of like trying to toughen up his younger brother rather than being able to kind of access, um, you know, be able to talk about emotions and kind of be able to deal with things in another way. Um, so do you think that's also kind of an element that runs through the story? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The sad thing is the tragedy comes in, in that I, I genuinely believe that Tom thinks that he's doing the right thing in playing mm -hmm. Slapface. That was how he was disciplined by his father. And, and he thinks that he's doing the right thing. He thinks that this is how you discipline your younger brother and, and he's doing him a favor. It's that tough love. It's that you know, like you said, the inability to access emotions and to be vulnerable um, because of how he was raised. And, and so he's doing the best he can, but he just isn't given the tools to be a good guardian, despite how hard he tries. That's what I really love about this film. It's not just one, one uh, a topic or idea, you know, it's a whole bunch of different uh, things and feelings and uh, emotions and how everything just weaves together perfectly. It was it was beautiful how Jeremiah did it. Mm -hmm. And tell us a bit about kind of the shooting of it because I don't know how much of it was a set, how you know how long you were actually having to be out in those woods. And of course, there's some very intense scenes to shoot. I mean, even the you know where we open with playing this game of flat face I was thinking god did you two have to kind of practice how you were going to pull that off um so you know what were some of the highlights and challenges of actually making the film well we, we, we did got... have a oh yeah sorry you can no you go for it buddy oh all right <laughs> we did have a stunt coordinator on the set uh named Matt Kerr and he was Keanu Reeves stunt double in uh the John Wick movies and um, he taught us how to do all the slapping and stuff and uh, the stuff with the gun and the knives and the, uh, the part where one of the bullies tackles me and all of that. He, he, he did all of that. He taught us all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, safety was really important to him on set. We also shot in upstate New York 
in October, November uh, of 2019. And in the beginning, the leaves were changing and it was beautiful. And it was it being in upstate New York, you know, it was, we, we loved being outside. Towards the end of the shoot, it was very cold. And, uh, and I just remember one night, th there was that scene where August is talking to Mirabelle and they're having like this sweet, tender moment. And both of them are sitting on the ground shivering in between takes. We're like, yeah. we're, we're, we have like hand warmers and, and we're like putting them on their face and we're like wrapping them in blankets. And then like Jeremiah yells action. So we pull the blankets away and they're, and they're talking, trying not to shiver. And I was like, um, I was like, I'm so glad that these kids are like, are not, are, are just going for it and staying in it. And that, cause they very easily could have been like, it's too cold. I'm going inside. <laughs> <laughs> we both we both caught cold from that. <laughs> we did. Yeah. Well, you, you uh, suffer from your art. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> and also when I was watching it, it's like it's so beautifully kind of shot, like the light in every scene and you know, just the the kind of overall aesthetic of it. And of course, I guess when you're shooting, you don't know exactly how it's gonna look after. So did you have you been able to see it in a cinema or on a big screen? And did it look how you imagined it to, having you know been involved in the making of it? Mm -hmm. Well, because of COVID, we weren't able to, we did premiere at CineQuest and, and did some virtual, we were at Fright Fest and Grim Fest and the festivals really um, showed us some love and we won some awards. So that was really nice. Um, and it was sort of the best case scenario with COVID closing so many theaters and everything. Uh, I really wish that we had a giant premiere all together on the big screen. And, um, and I'm, I'm very excited that Shudder that it, it's releasing this week and that the world can see the film uh, and we can share it with everybody. I do wish that we had a big theatrical yeah. premiere, you know, at least for the actors and the, and the director and, and the DP. You talked about the beautiful cinematography. Um, our, our DP, uh, Dom, Dominic Civilli, was just such a genius when it came to the, the lighting and the colors and the angles and everything. And, and so, I, for his sake, I wish that he was able to see his his movie on the big screen. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we did the best with what we had. And, and I would rather the world have the film now than wait uh, for another premiere or something like that. Mm. And, you know, we've already touched on lots of different things. But, you know, what do you ultimately hope people will take away from watching this? Because, of course, on the one hand, it, you know, it's, it's a really engrossing and, you know, an engaging film. But then, like we said, they've got this got all these other themes that come out of it. So, you know, what do you hope people take away? I'll start with you, August. Um, that, uh, you know, if you ever get bullied, you you are not alone. Whatever you're going through, you're not alone. You have other people you can talk to. You can reach out, and uh, there's people who are going through the same thing as you, and you, you should know that you're not alone. And unfortunately, Lucas did not know that. And uh, that went, uh, he suffered the hard way. He literally bottled up his feelings inside and created a monster inside of his head. And uh, it's, it's a really unfortunate and sad story. And uh, I hope that no one ever has to go through that in real life because uh, they should know that there is light at the end of the tunnel and that there is people who are also, like I said, going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. I see, Mike. Um, I would say probably don't use the game of slap face as a disciplinary tool. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> no, I would say probably... Uh, the takeaway would be, I mean, what August said, he said that so beautifully. I would also say, you know, be kind to others because you never know what somebody is going through. You know, you might present this tough exterior, this hard shell, but you really might be hurting inside. And um, and don't be afraid to just be honest with people, be vulnerable and, and you know, and seek help, like, like August said, if you are um, hurting. Uh, and also just be kind to people because you don't know what they're going through. I think I'm out of time, but um, can you quickly tell me what you might be working on next, August? If you've got another uh, horror role coming up, are you addicted to this now? Um, I actually was in a short film called Boys. It was directed by Luke Benward and produced by 
Ariel Winter. And um, it is in the festivals at the moment. And I have been in a few things here and there, but mm -hmm. I'm not really allowed to say right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, just know that they will be coming out very soon. Oh, amazing. And you, Mike? Um, my character just started airing on This Is Us. So I can I can talk about that now. So that's um, the final season of This Is Us is, is happening right now. And so I'm on there. Um, and then I just finished a horror film called The Way Out, um, which is uh, doing the festival circuit right now, too. So I'm excited about that. Amazing. Well, it's yeah. been so amazing to, to speak to both of you. Thanks so much for sharing all that with me. And I can't wait for everyone else to see this incredible film. So thanks so much. Sarah, thank you so much. And I love your wallpaper in the back. I love that. <laughs> oh, thanks. I was going to say that. Quite yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's quite funky. Good backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> love it to speak to you both. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Have Bye. a nice evening.